Hi, and welcome to a video on relations and functions. Today in this video, the goal that we have is to determine if a relation is a function. We're going to determine the domain and range of a function, and we're going to represent functions as rules and tables if we have time. Now, the first thing we need to do, do is kind of review the vocabulary. So a relationship is just a relationship between inputs and outputs. Anything can be a relation, okay? So if we're thinking this in terms of a diagram, a relation is a set of all relationships between inputs and outputs, and only some relations are functions. So functions are specifically the relations where each input has exactly one output. And this can be a little confusing, but we're going to figure out how this works in some examples. So here's an important note, and it can it's made evident by the diagram. All functions are relations. You can see that all functions fall inside the relation bubble, but not all relations are functions. So I could have a relation that's out here. It's a relation but it's not a function, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna investigate different ways to look at relations. We're gonna look at mapping diagrams, graphs, tables, and scatter plots. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this first one. Is the relation a function? Now remember, everything is a relation. So if you have an inputs and you have outputs, you have relations. So if we look at this, we have one paired with negative six. What we need to do is scan through. Do we have any more inputs that are ones? We don't, okay? Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at two is paired with three. Do we have any more inputs that are two? Because if we do, they better be paired with three. This one is not. So if you notice, two has two separate outputs. It has an output of three and an output of two. So this is not a function because the rules about functions was that for each input you must have one and only one output. So we could actually stop right here and say, yes, this is a relationship, but it's not a function. But if you look, three also has two different outputs. So there's another problem right there, because if I look at three and I say, what do you get out if you put in three? You say, well, I don't know, I could get out one or I could get out seven, all right? So if you're not sure what you get out because there are different options, that's when your relation is not a function. And then we have even again with four, we get two separate outputs and they're different. So four, when we put in four, we do not get exactly one output. We get out an output of negative one or an output of negative of positive two. So this table represents something that is not a function, okay? Let's look at another one. This is called a mapping diagram. So when you have bubbles like this, you could actually turn this into a table. If you wanted, you could say, okay, I have my inputs, which could be represented by Xs, and my outputs, which could be represented by Ys, and my inputs are one, and one matches with three. Okay, and I have two, and two matches with four, and I have three, and three pairs with one. Okay, so if you look at this, none of our inputs repeat, Therefore, we don't have that problem that we had in the previous um, relation. So this relation is a function. So this one, we're going to say, yes, this is a function. Okay, so here's a nice little trick, but it makes sense. If your inputs don't repeat, you're done. You don't even have to look at the outputs, okay? So... Each input has exactly one output. If I say, what do you get out if you put in one? You know, you get out three and only three. That's the only option. Same with two. If you put in two, you only get out four. If you put in three, you only get out one. So each input has exactly one output. Okay, here's another mapping diagram. Now, I like this one. We're going to kind of compare and contrast with the one above. If I turn this into a table, into an input-output table. I have inputs five goes with two, four also goes with two, and six also goes with two. Now, you might think, oh, this isn't a function because the two repeats, but it is okay if the y values repeat. That is not a problem, okay? If each input is different, so we're looking at the five, four, and six, if each input is different, 
you do have a function. So this is yes, it is a function. And again, if I ask you the question, all right, you put in five, what do you get out? Well, if you put in five, you always get out two. If you put in four, you always get out two. If you put in six, you always get out two. So each input has exactly one output. It just so, so happens that those outputs are the same. Now, the other thing I want you to remember is that when we're talking about inputs and outputs, we're also, um, we could use the word domain and range. Okay, so remember, domain represents your inputs or your x values, and range represents your outputs or your y values. So those words we're going to start hearing a lot as well. Okay, they just mean inputs and outputs or x's and y's. And the way I like to remember it's alphabetical. D comes first in the alphabet, R comes second, just like x comes first and then comes y. So that's a nice way to remember domain and range and that they match with x for domain and y for range. Okay, let's look at some graphs. And I have, you can kind of see, two, I have two graphs here. I think I have four graphs. So let's look at them separately. Because some of these graphs have discrete data. Discrete are individual points. Um, and then some are continuous. Discrete are points. And continuous are connected. All right, so remember, when you put an x value in, your x value is your input and your y values are your output. So if I look at this first graph, this input of 1, if x equals 1, I get two outputs up here. I get out 2 and 3. So this is not a function because it doesn't pass this vertical line test. If I drop a vertical line, which is like an input, I get two hits or two outputs. Also right here, if I drop a vertical line at x equals 3, I get two outputs. So this one is not a function because each input or each vertical line gets multiple outputs or multiple hits. Okay. If I look at the next graph, this is called a sine curve. It's nice and wavy. But notice, if I take a vertical line and I continue making a vertical line, I cannot ever get more than one hit on this sine wave. So, see, one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit. Okay. For each input, which is each vertical line, I only get one output. So this one is yes. It is a function. And this graph is continuous because it's connected. All right, the next graph looks like we've drawn a line through several points. And if you look at this, this graph is continuous. And if I draw my vertical line, I only ever get one hit. Now we could draw those vertical lines through the specific points I'm given, I've given you, but we can also draw them in between. But you still only get one output, which is a hit for each input, which is a vertical line. So this is called the vertical line test. So this one is also yes. It is a function. OK, and this last one with the purple dots. Remember, this is a discrete set of data points because they're points. They're not connected. So this is discrete. I'm going to take my vertical line, and I'm going to see I get one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit, one hit. This one kind of missed there. Let's try that again, one hit. So look, I only ever get one output, which is a hit, for each input, which is a vertical line. So this one does pass the vertical line test. Oh, and I was trying to color code these in green. So let me turn these green because I would really like those to be, there we go. Because everything that is yes a function, I'm trying to code in green. So this is yes, it is a function. Something that would not be a function might be a circle. If I had the graph of a circle, you can see how if I used my vertical line test on the circle, I would get two hits at some point. So this one would not be a function. All right, and the more you practice these, the more they make sense. So, so far we've looked at tables, mapping diagrams, and graphs. And I have one last challenge for you, okay? If the following relation is a function, 
what numbers cannot go in the blank space? All right, so I'm gonna give you a minute to think about this. Maybe pause the video to see if you can figure out yourself. And hopefully you just pause the video and try to think of what numbers could not go in the space. Remember, none of these inputs are allowed to repeat. So what cannot go in that space, you cannot use anything that's already been used, which is one, two, five, nine, or negative 11. So you cannot use any of these inputs that have already been used, because if you did, then you would have an input that gets two separate outputs, all right? But you could use any other number is okay. So if you wanted to be really wacky and use 3,000 and one, that would be okay. 17 would be okay. So these are ones that are, 3,485,672,000 would be okay, all right? You just can't use any of the numbers that have already been used in the domain of the function. And remember the y values are the range. Okay, I hope this video helped you to better understand domain and range. And if you have questions, let me know in class.